Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're gonna go through smart contracts and where I think they're heading, in particular Binance, and a small update with Cardano and Ethereum. Also, you would have seen in the title somewhere, I'm talking about the housing market cycle. Now, there's a lot of news coming out about it, and if you're familiar with the channel, you've been around for many months, you would know that we talk about the housing cycle as well, even though the channel is primarily based on cryptocurrency at the moment. Overall, we are an investor channel. So we learn to understand where the next best opportunity is and then cycle those profits into another asset class. At least that's the idea behind investing. We wanna know where our money is going to get the best returns. So in today's video, I wanna update the uh, property cycle, this is for the Aussies and for the Americans. This is the international 18 year cycle, which you may have heard me talk about before. It's been a while since I've had Kathy on the channel here uh, from Property Share Market Economics, but I wanna get her back on the channel as well to give us another update. This one's about three to four months old now, but we're still in that mid cycle slowdown stage. But I've got some news coming up for that. But without further ado, let's get stuck into the cryptocurrency and then move across to the property cycle stuff. I'll make mention to that. I think it's really important to understand this because you've got to do something with those gains, whether it's in property, whether it's in stocks, whether you put it under your mattress or put it into stable coins, you've got to understand the cycle. And this is the importance of it. And there is a lot of news out there saying that property should crash. There's a lot going on on YouTube and it's just simply untrue in my opinion and my experience. 2020, everyone thought the property market should crash. What do we see now? They're up bloody 20 or 30%. I would just really caution who you listen to with that. And then don't just take my word, do your own research as well. Get the books that we're talking about. Go and look at the opposite side to this whole theory about the cycle. All right, without further ado, subscribe, like, uh, bell notification icon. Let's see if we can get the video to 3000 likes. All right, guys, let's have a quick look at Google Trends like we always do. Now, NFTs are still on the rise. Binance is on the rise. Ethereum on the slight decrease when we look at a 90 day worldwide. So I'm gonna talk about Binance today and why I think it has even more potential after a bit of a cool down. Long term, looking really, really good, we know that. Short term, we'll see, we're gonna look at the charts. Let's move across, coin market cap, $1.8 trillion. Bitcoin, 60,000, Ethereum, call it 1900 and Binance is still sitting pretty well up in that high $200 uh, area at around a $41 billion market cap. So this has just eclipsed everything else, taking out Ripple, Cardano, Polkadot, and it's really starting to cement its position in that top three space. You know, we don't look at Tether, just the real cryptocurrencies that we can trade. Next piece of news, I wanna start with some Bitcoin stuff, some of these huge headlines out there. And it's really the news that I see is making the headlines because once you go on to dig a little further in the articles, uh, this one is saying uh, Raul Powell says Bitcoin could hit $1 million price tag in this cycle. Here's why. He's not really saying he knows for sure, but he thinks maybe he'll get like a, a spike out into a million dollars. I definitely don't think that's possible. Who knows, right? It could happen, it couldn't. No, no one knows for sure. Obviously, we have a lot of institutions coming in. Uh, when will the cycle end? Is it this year? Is it next year? Is it three years from now? Is it a six month cycle? Overall, I think we still have a long time to go. I don't think after a two and a half year accumulation zone, which we've talked about between 2018, 2019, 2020, that is a long accumulation zone of basically accumulating Bitcoin, if you're unfamiliar with the terms. And I don't see it just shooting up for six months and then it being over. Uh, I don't think the bull market will be longer than the accumulation zone. So that's something to keep in mind. But overall, I think people are gonna be looking for bigger returns, but you have to start taking some profits off the table. And that's what we look at quite often in the Investor Accelerator Group, which you can find a link to down below. And of course, here on the channel. So this is just basically saying what Raul Pal is talking about, or at least the article is just flipping some of the words around. Next big thing I think is a hundred grand. So probably no surprise to many people, probably a psychological level. Some guys were getting in at 10,000, which we've talked about as well. That's a, you know, a pretty decent 10 times your money. And you gotta be taking some of the profits off the table. Otherwise your portfolio just becomes too heavy in one side of things. So that's an important point to note. Even if you're not looking to do that yourself, it's what happens out there in the finance space. If you get a too heavy of a portfolio on one side, profits are taken, look for other opportunities. 
Bitcoin bull cycle will end on this date. So I'm bringing up the extreme cases here. We've seen a million dollar Bitcoin. We're seeing BitBoy Crypto talking about this is the exact date that it's going to end on. He's saying within two weeks of this certain period that we could see the Bitcoin bull end. So he gives a date at the 28th. I think this strategy is highly flawed. However, who knows? You know, at the end of the day, we have to make our own opinions on the research that we feel comfortable with. And he's obviously done that and he thinks around this date. I think there could be a turn on this date. I don't know if this is going to be the ultimate peak. And I say a turn because I'm very much of the view that seasonal dates in the solar system, in the universe, things that are bigger than us here on Earth tend to give turning points. Now, we see that often with the equinoxes and the solstices, which are the 21st of the change of the season. So you can get into the whole astrology side of things, but essentially that is cycles and those apply to planet Earth and the whole solar system as well. You know, there's 28 years in Saturn and we get 28 year cycles, etc., etc. We can go on in other videos about that. But talking about this date of the 28th of September, I think there could be a turnaround that day because that's the uh, the 21st of September is the equinox. I'm going to get my two right there. So equinox is a strong turning point, just like we see with March, which is coming up next week. So these are times to look out for in the market for turns, whether they're the exact top or bottom. Don't know. But like we saw in 2020, there was a big turn the COVID crash in around the 20 something of March, 23rd of March, we saw that low. So all I'm saying here is we could see a turn. I don't think it's going to be the absolute end of the cycle because I don't believe that the whole four year cycle is going to play out exactly as it did last year. And then using a 49% of the time up, it's just, it's just all too specific for the natural ebb and flow of a market. Next piece of news I got here, we're going to start looking at some DAOs and DeFi. And the reason I bring this up is because I want to dive a little bit deeper into a project called Badger, Badger DAO, bringing Bitcoin to DeFi. So we haven't seen too much DeFi around Bitcoin, not so much decentralized finance using Bitcoin. Badger is trying to do that. And essentially, I like the chart. That's where I'm going with this one here. So I've got Badger to have a look at. Badger has just been on a downward spiral since it's been launched on Binance. And that was only just earlier this month. And we're getting a little bit of volume come in at these lows. So we've got some spike up volume, another spike, another couple of spikes up, another spike. Nothing is confirming that we are out of this trend yet. Pretty much a straight across here and beneath these lows. So nothing has confirmed that we're going to get a swing out of the top. So just keeping an eye on Badger, but I think the project has uh, some, some good fundamentals around it. So going to look to do a little bit more research on it. But in terms of the chart, looking great. What we would want to see if we didn't have time to research, which I don't suggest anyone not do their research. But if we wanted to go down that path, then I'd be looking. Where's my tool? Here we go. Uh, I want to see pretty much a move up and then just come back and retest. And I like that level because it basically gives us just around these lows that came in and uh, looking at a, a sort of a resistance area there before we come back and test this as support. So with that in mind, all I'm going to do is throw a, an alert here, an alert underneath these lows in case we begin to break down on Badger, but we're going to come back to Badger Dow because that one looks pretty good. Next piece, ADA. ADA is the important one here we come back to often. Cardano, ADA, whales may be responsible for consolidation as population shrinks. Okay, so it's really important to keep in mind, in my opinion, that we don't start going down the path of manipulation, 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 because that's what I've seen. I, th I think it was on one of those BitBoy channels, but if something doesn't work out, then it's easy to blame manipulators. This should have worked because I did my research and it said so, but it didn't work. Blame the manipulation. It's absolute nonsense because if the price goes up, then of course that can also be manipulation. So manipulation, you got to take it or leave it. It's either one or the other. The whole thing is manipulated or it's not. And of course, we know that the whole thing is manipulated, but that's why we use charts because that's going to show us 
as best as we can understand the chart itself is going to show us in advance of what the manipulation is doing which is based on a hundred years of research on Wyckoff theory which is again what we talk about in the charts looking at accumulation and distribution so where the smart money is getting in and where it's getting out in terms of the volume and the bar action that's the main thing here so it is manipulated let's get over that it's manipulation don't blame someone else just learn how to read it looking down at these wallets which is of course numbers and statistics data which is pretty much true you would say it's it's the data this is basically looking at wallets that have uh, you know the, the the amount of ADA in them and then some of these are reducing so we're looking at uh, say 400 to 500 thousand dollar ADA wallets dropped by 35 wallets between 1 million and 5 million ADA dropped by 152 wallets and then the larger wallets the massive massive whales uh, I think they've got another name apart from whale but we'll, we'll move on 25 million to 50 million and 100 million to 2.5 billion they've also decreased by one so that could be the reason for some of these smaller wallets increasing in size because maybe they're splitting up their bigger positions into smaller sizes maybe they're selling off who knows exactly but there's a big movement in the one to five million and uh, I'm sure you guys who are really really into ADA would know where this one wallet why this one wallet has dropped from a hundred million to 2.5 billion we went from nine wallets with that amount to eight wallets no movement beneath that one more wallet with a one more big why a wallet has dropped down so we're getting a little bit of a movement in the wallets which may have shaken up the market but like we talked about about two weeks ago things were looking a little bit toppy anyway and that's just natural for the market to come back after a bit of a spike into crazy highs after almost 60x it's just to be expected and so we're currently sitting at a dollar and six on ADA on a one-day chart we are still heading a little lower Sometimes we get these spikes and probably new people to the channel just say, oh, it's it's going up again. But you got to look at the overall trend. Seriously, if you call in this day, I remember that when we did a video and it went up to $1.20 and then came back down and sat at $1.10, it literally didn't even do 10%. So you really got to look at the overall trend. This was the day that I was thinking, this is looking a little bit toppy, huge volume, huge spike. And it's in the videos as well. You can go and see that. We literally talked about it that day. And then these next few days, I thought it's probably not a bad idea to, to sell out some of it, to move into another project or just hold in stable coins until ADA drops a little bit further. If you're just looking to buy and hold, then it's probably best just to hold because then obviously the tax implications are going to eat up your profits if we only get a 10 or 20% drop. We really want to see something in the 30%. But the other side to this is you could just sell it back into uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum, God forbid, selling ADA into Ethereum, because this has basically made you money if you did do that from the top to the low, sitting at around 45% now from the absolute top in February, late February to where we are now. That's a loss on your Cardano. All right, that's, that's Cardano uh, looking there and then also Bitcoin same about 40 odd percent and it's still going so we're looking for a support you can see my alert sitting here at around 1600 sats if not probably somewhere a bit further down around 14 so 14 to 1600 would be a nice place for uh, overall support but we should get a bounce at some point maybe a small bounce up from here to 2000 or 2200 before we continue to drop or consolidate let's move back to some of the news Ethereum, Ethereum roll-ups looking at uh, increase or decreasing the the fees on Ethereum and improving the scalability problems. So roll-ups just remind me of those old Aussie, I think they're still around, the Aussie snacks that you'd put in your lunchbox. Trash, of course, just sugar. But anyway, roll-ups may help Ethereum scalability problem before ETH 2.0 and its sharding arrives. Experts told blah, blah, blah. These are some of the points here. Competitors like Polkadot, Avalanche already have thousands of tra transactions per second and negligible fees. We've seen that before, but we haven't seen either of these on scale like Ethereum. So who knows once it gets to scale, what will happen to those? Buren said that it will increase transaction speeds of about a factor of 100. So that's pretty decent. And uh, what we're looking at here, Rollup could achieve a transaction speed of 2,000 to 3,000 per second. That's a very nice increase. 
All right, but the roll-up bring, brings its own baggage. Experts told us that while roll-ups are highly effective, they move the network away from true decentralization. So essentially, it seems like it's working more like lightning, work, lightning network on Bitcoin. Rollup addresses the scalability problem by processing transactions off of the Ethereum blockchain, minimizing congestion on Ethereum by reducing its load. Sounds very similar to Lightning Network. You guys can let me know in the comments if you see it otherwise, but that's pretty much the way I see that, long and short of it, to understand the news nice and quick. Overall, Ethereum looking good, regardless of these uh, improvements, which they might be less decentralized or more decentralized, Overall, they are moving to the decentralized space and that is Ethereum's ethos. That's, that's where they're going. So if they have to do a few things in the meantime to improve it, I think that's just going to be better for everyone at this point. We were looking at DAOs earlier, looking at Badger DAO. So I thought I would just mention Binance Academy. They have a lot in the space of how to learn about all of these different crazy terms. I won't talk about this too much, but I'll just make a mention to the new guys instead of asking in YouTube comments, which you can, I mean, it's helpful. It goes to the algorithm. Someone else in the comments might be able to help. Here is another uh, way to get your information so that you can get it from the source or get it from um, a good educational platform quicker. And so this is it, Binance Academy. I've got a link to Binance in the description down below. So if you use that, you'll get 10% off your trading fees if you trade on there. Otherwise, just use it, set up an account and you can learn from Binance Academy. And you don't even need to have an account to learn from Binance Academy either. But if you wanted the official link, it's down below. This is a great place to go for extra information. All right, let's have a look at Badger and the market cap like we do. If you didn't see how I calculated market caps, go back to yesterday's video and specifically talk about e and doing the uh, the, the data on that. So looking at uh, how to calculate the market cap and if it's a good project or not, looking at that itself to see if we can get those gains. Badger, $47. Don't worry about the price if you're new here. This could mean that there's only one on the market. Obviously there's not, but we want to have a look at the market cap itself. And the market cap's at 358 million, fully diluted, a billion. So it's there's still a fair bit locked up, but it's not as bad as some of the others, which only have 10% out on the market. Take that for what you will. Basically, we're at a $47 mark. I like this, just looking briefly at the chart like we saw a little bit earlier as well. Uh, we've had a move up and now we are consolidating sideways. So all we could see on the previous chart on Binance was uh, just the drop into this consolidation period. So we've seen it move up from about seven bucks, currently sitting at 49 or so. So seven times the, the value as it was earlier on in December. Not looking too bad overall. Market cap is still relatively low. DeFi space, Bitcoin, some more terms are coming good and I really like the look of that. Also another DAO, which I've talked about, is uh, Mantra. So this one's at 58 cents, but again, the most important part is the market cap. So it's at 172 million. If you were to double this, that's about 340, 345 million. And like we just saw with Badger, its market cap is very close to that, 350. So 300, they're both the same. So if we doubled the price of Mantra from, uh, where was it, 58 cents, call it 60 cents to $1.20, then you would have the same market cap. So therefore you could possibly expect similar gains if the projects were equal projects, right? So you don't, it doesn't matter about how much the price is itself. I know most of you get that by now, just thought sort I'd of make a quick mention. This chart is heading up. I mean, anyone can see that, it's shooting up. Looks like we're about to cross some of the old highs at around 60 cents, but overall we've had a nice accumulation zone, um, still a relatively low market cap and uh, looking like a solid project, especially because you can find it on Binance and you can find it on SwiftX, along with BadgerDAO is also on SwiftX. So I will make mention about MantraDAO, DeFi protocol that offers mortgages, loans, cross-chain DeFi products was listed on the Binance Innovation Zone today. So this is talking about some sort of FUD and they've thrown out some scam alerts, etc., for Mantra DAO now, not Badger, but Mantra. And this is from Woo Blockchain. Um, they've, they've done this before to Mantra and I don't know why, but you probably have some people out there who don't like the project or they've got something against it or the founder, or there might be some truth to it, but they're just spinning it way out of control. So these are all things to keep in mind. Overall, uh, the project looks reasonably sound from what I have found through these articles that are refuting the FUD and um, I need to do further research. This is a uh, 
project which I think has potential to give us some decent gains, especially at 170 odd million dollar market cap. So we've looked at Ada, we've looked at Badger, we have OM, which is Mantra Dow, which we'll have a, a quick look at now. It is on the decline. So it has a, it has spiked out, broken through its around 800 sat level to around 20 or 1300 and now it's dumping pretty hard back to a thousand. So this is not something that I'm looking to FOMO into, but it is on the list to have to continue looking at because of this space of decentralized finance, uh, DAOs and you know the whole Ethereum and everything else in that blockchain space to try and push more decentralized finance, um, looking for better returns on their money. So uh, OM, USDT, 20% down at the moment from yesterday's price. And this had the nice breakthrough at around 45 cents. Looking pretty good overall. These two are gonna, gonna be some that I keep coming back to on the channel, I think. So looking good. All right, economics. Let's quickly look at the property market because like we've said before, we need to do something with these profits, but we also need to understand what's going on out there in the broader space. So if you're just new to investing, stick around with it. It might be a little bit heavy, but I'll try and make it as light as possible. and we'll just look at it high level stuff so economics property is the main thing i want to have a look at here and we can see in the uk house sellers boosting asking prices the us house prices going up china home prices grow uh, most in six months on lower supply i know here specifically on the gold coast brisbane uh, sydney melbourne from around that august september period six months ago things have gone ballistic in the prices, especially here on the coast. Townhouses, units that I was looking at around that four fifty to $550,000 level, now fetching seven to $900,000. It's It's gone absolutely mental. It's very, very crazy. I'd probably say it's more around that 700 to 800-ish thousand dollar level. And uh, the 900 end was some stuff that was sitting around that 650 to 700 just over six months ago. So this news that we're running out of uh, government stimulus, for for example, in Australia, and prices are set to fall. It's been the same narrative that has been going on since, you could say last year, and you could also say 10 years ago when we came to the bottom of the GFC, it just shouldn't have gone up. And this stuff is just completely incorrect because they are looking at the cycle and the wrong timing. Going with that is going to just stop you from actually looking into markets which uh, are in their up peak of the cycle. This is kind of akin to Bitcoin in 2019 and 20, when people say, no, it has to keep going down. We've got to see a thousand dollar Bitcoin. Bitcoin's dead. It's the same deal when they're talking about property, when when the cycle is actually up, the prices are increasing and it can it, it cannot make any sense. It is it, so expensive to buy a property. Uh, you know, people, there's just less people that are able to afford to buy a property. Wages haven't gone up. People still aren't working. The economy is down, etc. You get the point. You hear it over and over again. However, the cycle is up and the property prices are going up. So it's one of those things where you have to really get in, do your research, feel very comfortable with the cycle itself and understanding where to look for the information. Check the, the prices themselves and just watch them continue. Uh, just keep a track of an area so that you're understanding the price of that area. And overall, this is kind of a broad thing leading up into the end of the 18 year cycle. So we have a 14 years up and approximately four years down. That brings us to around 2026. And so we're gonna be here on the channel following it every step of the way. I'm gonna get property share market economics back on the channel. Kathy from um, PSE, we'll call it. And we're gonna talk a bit more about the property cycle because I just don't see enough of the real understanding of the cycle out on YouTube. There's a lot of fear about why they should continue to fall. And all we've seen is the prices go up. So a very good opportunity missed, similar to missing Bitcoin at four, five, six, eight thousand dollar Bitcoins because it should have died again. So this is, uh, th this is the main news I wanted to cover here before we move on. This is the 18 year cycle. If you wanna have another quick look at that, uh, property share market economics. You can find this all for free that you don't have to log in to do any of this, but this is um, this is free data here over 200 years. 
got another little piece here. Well, this one is someone who disputes the 18 year cycle. So check both. I like to present both sides of the argument here so that you can really go and see what they're talking about. I see the 18 year cycle that Phil's presented as a holistic view incorporating economics, um, uh, astrology, whether you think of it as a good thing or not, but we're looking at overall uh, influences on humans and that is an, a beautiful holistic way to look at things in my opinion. Whereas when I look at something like Yardney, it's just really looking back one or two cycles. I want to see hundreds of years of data, especially for big markets like land. Now, the last thing I want to leave on is Binance, and I'm going to dig into this in another video, probably in a separate video as well. But essentially, Binance launches payment services with support for merchants. This is pretty big. A couple of days ago now from this news piece on finance magnates, but this just reminds me of uh, Visa and MasterCard. So it might not be news to anyone else, but to a lot of people, it's where, where is this going? What is Binance doing? They are becoming so big that I think they could rival MasterCard, which is at a market cap of 380 billion, and Visa, which is at 480 billion. We know Binance is at around uh, 30 or 40 billion now. So they're at 41 billion. So there's, there's a 10x between Binance and Visa. So between MasterCard and Visa, that's a pretty massive gain when we look at it like that. Plus they have all of their trading, they have loans, they have um, interest. There's a whole lot of stuff going on here. No fee transactions. They have 30 currencies that they can transact with. Things are going to get very, very big for Binance. So I don't know if it's whether it's going to be from today until tomorrow that Binance shoots to 10x. I doubt it. There has to be some gradual steps that go up. And whether it's this cycle or the next, long term Binance is looking like it's positioning itself to take on the, the likes of MasterCard and Visa, but from a digital standpoint, and they are set with their user base, their uh, infrastructure, and they're probably one step ahead of Visa and MasterCard when it comes to that. So this is something that I'm keeping a track of long term. Uh, I hope you guys are too. I'll wrap the video up there. You know, you can purchase any of this stuff off SwiftX and Binance themselves, the things we've talked about on the channel. I don't have any buy recommendations for you today, just research on the charts and the fundamentals. So if you enjoyed that, let me know in the comments down below, like the video up, subscribe to the channel, uh, bell notification icon, you know the deal, and you can get into the Investor Accelerator, link down below. Uh, price is going up at the end of this month, discount is still on there if you drop your email address on the website, link down below. I'll wrap it up there guys, thank you once again for joining me for another epic, massive cryptocurrency news video. Uh, I'll see you at the next one, until then, have more fun to get more done.